Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we talk about another critical thing you need to know for the NPT. Today is no different. We'll be going through the content outline that'll be tested on test day. So as you know, the FSBPT, the Federation of State Boards of Physical Therapy, they publish the questions, the number and quantity of questions in each of the sections that you'll be tested on on test day. And so today, as we do in most of our episodes, we talk about practice questions and ways to dominate on test day. So the lymphatic system, it contains somewhere between three and eight questions, certainly not one of the biggest sections on the exam, but definitely one worth knowing. Uh, one of the big changes they made a few years ago was that they pulled lymphatic system away from cardiovascular and pulmonary to give it its own dedicated system. So therefore, Again, you can plan on somewhere between three and eight questions related to the lymphatic system. Today, we'll be talking about lymphatic interventions. But before we get to that, just wanted to point out that each quarter we're running our fresh VIP and crash courses. So we're just getting geared up for our VIP class for the April 2023 cycle. Uh, be sure to join that if you're looking for a systematic and organized way to go through your studies to make sure that you are not only using your time efficiently, but going through the content that is most likely to show up on test day in a way that is easily applicable and actually sticks so that you can dominate on test day. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and get started with our practice question. Here we go. I'll read the question to you as per our usual. I'll give you a moment to respond and uh, then we'll talk about the answer. So a patient with lymphedema of the right lower extremity is receiving complete decongestive therapy. During the initial intervention phase, which of the following groupings of techniques will be most appropriate? So patient with lymphedema, right lower extremity, receiving complete decongestive therapy. During the initial intervention phase, which of the following groupings of techniques will be most appropriate? One, daily manual lymphatic drainage, meticulous skin care, enhance lymph flow, lymph flow through thoracic duct. Two, daily self-care manual lymphatic drainage, long stretch bandages, enhance lymph flow through the right lymphatic duct. Three, weekly manual lymphatic drainage, meticulous skin care, enhance lymph flow through the right lymphatic duct. And finally, weekly self-care lymphatic drainage, short stretch bandages, enhance the lymph flow through the thoracic duct. So it's kind of a mix and match question. I'll read the options one more time. So we've got someone with lymphedema, decongestive therapy, which groupings will be most appropriate? Which of the groupings of, tech, of interventions will be most appropriate? So we've got daily manual lymphatic drainage, meticulous skin care, enhanced lymph flow through the thoracic duct, daily self-care manual lymphatic drainage, long stretch bandages, enhanced lymph flow through the right lymphatic duct, weekly manual lymphatic drainage, meticulous skin care, enhanced lymph flow through the right lymphatic duct, and finally, weekly self-care manual lymphatic drainage, short search bandages, and enhanced lymph flow through the right, or sorry, enhanced lymph flow through the thoracic duct. So this question is clearly testing on whether you can identify, okay, what types of manual lymphatic drainage would be most appropriate? So it's really a mix and match between daily lymphatic drainage or daily or weekly lymphatic drainage or daily or weekly self-care or home exercise manual lymphatic drainage question is between long stretch and short stretch bandages. And then finally, which thoracic or which lymphatic duct is the target? Is it the right lymphatic duct or the thoracic duct? So the correct answer to this question is number one, the daily manual lymphatic drainage, meticulous skin care, and enhanced lymph flow through the thoracic duct. So as you recall, the watershed areas for the lymphatic system, the right and left lower extremities and the left upper extremity, they're all combined into the thoracic duct. It's only the right upper extremity that goes into the right lymphatic duct. So think of it this way, three quarters of everything passes through the thoracic duct with the exception of the right arm. The right arm has its own watershed system. So therefore, you know that it has to be the thoracic duct and not the right lymphatic duct for the right lower extremity. And then as far as just the mix and match here, certainly you would not use long stretch bandages. You would absolutely want to use meticulous skin care. And then daily, especially during the initial phases, that daily manual lymphatic drainage, that's critical simply because during that intensive intervention phase or the initial phase of intervention, you are going to want to, to make as many changes as you can. You're trying to get the fluid, the lymph fluid, to disperse 
evenly and to get it so that it uh, obviously the goal is to eliminate as much of the lymph fluid as possible from the interstitial spaces, get that back into the lymphatic system and on its way back into the circulatory system. So therefore, the correct grouping of symptoms here would be daily manual lymphatic drainage, meticulous skin care, and enhanced lymph flow through the thoracic duct. So as we mentioned, the right arm is the only odd man out where everything from the right arm drains into the right lymphatic duct and everything else is to the, to the thoracic duct. And then uh, we've talked about this in previous episodes, but you have to lock into your mind that short stretch bandages, meaning they're not very stretchy. So a short stretch bandage will feel very firm to the touch. If you were to try to stretch it, it would not be very stretchy. So a short stretch bandage gives you what's called low resting pressure and high working pressure. All that means is that when it's sitting on the skin, it's holding gently. You think about it as it's just like fingertip pressure on the skin. However, it resists movement because it does not stretch. So therefore you have the high working pressure low resting pressure, high working pressure. That's the short stretch bandage. So there you go. You do want to certainly incorporate a self-care or a home exercise program into in with these patients. And then eventually down the road into like the optimization phase or the secondary phase of intervention, you'll be transitioning from intensive care into a more home-based manual, home-based home exercise program which would include home-based self-care lymphatic drainage. And it would also include custom or even semi-custom compression garments that they would place on themselves rather than the full, uh, the full compression bandaging system, which obviously is very difficult for patients to place on themselves. I'm trying to make it as helpful as possible or as easy as possible so that for the long term, they're able to self-manage their, their lymphedema. So again, you've seen, I had a patient recently who had had a, a total or a radical mastectomy, which from breast cancer had a radical mastectomy and permanently just for years and years, she fought having the lymphedema in her arm. And so she had to have compression, uh, custom compression garment, compression glove, and then had to do lots of, of self-care, just do that manual lymphatic drainage on herself, you know, pretty much every day or multiple times a week to try to, to uh, limit or inhibit the appearance of, of lymphedema because it almost always after some type of radical mastectomy or lumpectomy or any lymph node removal, especially in the axillary region, that will result in lymphedema long-term. So certainly something to watch out for. So there you go. Your components of complete decongestive therapy include meticulous skin care, uh, compression garments or compression bandaging. You can use obviously lots of education, but you can use exercises to help to prompt the flow of lymphatic fluid. We talked about this before as well. You want to clear the proximal segments first. So that's why almost always your interventions start like this. You do deep abdominal breathing followed by hip exercise and the knee exercise and ankle exercise. You're trying to move the fluid. Always, the fluid is always flowing from distal to proximal, but you have to clear out the proximal segments first. So that's why this is, and you've heard me say it in other episodes too but you always drain the proximal segments first, but all the strokes are in the direction of flow from distal to proximal. So that's something, be sure to spend some time making sure you've got that wrapped around your head, that you can wrap your head around it, rather that uh, <laughs> wrap it around your head, uh, compression bandaging. But uh, you'll, you wanna make sure to clear out the proximal segments first before moving on to the distal segments, but every stroke is in the direction of flow trying to get everything back to the more central region. So there you go. Be sure to check out ptfinalexam.com for more information about any of our courses. You can also check us out over on YouTube. Uh, we've got a lot going on over there as well as Facebook, Instagram. Uh, you can find us all over the place. So give us a like. If you haven't already, be sure to leave us a five-star review on this podcast. Appreciate you taking the time to do that. In the meantime, stay safe out there. Happy studying. Catch you in the next episode. Will kind of fist bumps all around.